Assalamu alaikum. So in this video, I wanted to tell you how I found my purpose in Islam. What we're doing during this Ramadan is incredible. We've moved to a new mosque in Slovakia. We have a new sense of community. Everything has been changing so rapidly. I just want to recap what's been happening because it also impacted the way I think about my purpose. Because before that, I always thought like my purpose is to do dawah or like invite people to Islam or all do, do all these things online. I like making videos. Um, I like sharing my thoughts. I like talking to people and having interviews and just challenging ideas. It's cool for me. But I came to conclusion that basically sometimes you have this feeling of like emptiness, even if you're a big influencer. There are people who I know who have millions of subscribers or hundreds of thousands. And sometimes you feel empty because like you don't you don't see the impact of your work. You don't see really the impact on people. And yeah, you have these communities but you're all kind of like scattered around and there's not like a single purpose you guys have. And maybe you try to sell them something, right? But I just found out the biggest uh, mercy, biggest blessing from Allah has been this YouTube because because of this one video we released like a couple of days ago, we were able to raise, subhanAllah, almost 20,000 euros, give and take, which is incredible for such a small community, such a small channel. This all started from a comment on YouTube inviting us to Vienna. And we went to Vienna, we made a video with our friend. And then on the way back, we were talking with my friend and we said like, hey, we should have some prayer room in Slovakia. Boom, we had it. Next couple of days, it was the beginning of Ramadan. Remember the first video I've made, it was just like an empty room with one Uzbek guy. Miro, hey, salam alaikum. Great news, alhamdulillah. We have been able to secure a place for a masjid. You can see, this is it. In the background, there's Miro. Assalamu alaikum. I'm so glad that I'm in Slovakia and I found a place to make a prayer. As a Muslim, I'm so glad. Basically, this is nothing. It's an empty room for now. Uh, it's Qadr of Allah. It's beginning of Ramadan today. And I think just three days ago we had this idea and it happened like this. <laughs> and now that room served a purpose for a few weeks, few months. No carpets, nothing. It was really bad. And we were just using it for Tarawih, that was the only purpose. But then we said like, hey, maybe we can just open a new mosque and have like a like a new room and have Jumas and stuff like that. So we started doing that. Assalamu alaikum, Emir, if you're watching this. Um, and all these guys helped out, you know, and there were times where I wanted to close this thing out because there, there were like two, three people praying. It was really bad. I was preparing Jumas for like four or five people. It was really embarrassing and I knew like this goal this year has to be growing the community, nothing else. Bismillah. Let me show you guys. This is the main male masjid. I know it's not huge, but come on guys. It's not that bad, right? Or is it? This is the women's side, okay? And they have this. SubhanAllah ups and downs, ups and downs. I never thought this, I, it, it didn't appeal to me to be leading this community in any way. I was just doing it because I didn't want to travel to other mosques for Juma. <laughs> and I just wanted to have, I knew I could fund this stuff. And I just wanted to have a place to pray where I live. Like that's the purpose, right? Um, and also to get people together and uh, have a mosque as like Slovak Muslims to do shaharas and things and when that started happening it was really cool and then we started to have some new lectures and stuff but it was still like something on the side very very on the side like i didn't even look at it as my purpose it was just like this isn't this is just like a nice thing to have i have my business this is the main thing my business is the main thing for my purpose in this dunya i don't mean the purpose overall in the akhirat is to worship allah but I was saying, like, in this dunya, what is my purpose is to have a business and to have this and to conquer. And so the business thing, I thought this is my way to prove something to the world, which is such a jahiliya mindset. But of course, this I used to have this, so it drove me crazy, this mindset to prove something to somebody else. This, this was my whole life was just proving people wrong and showing them like, like yeah, I'm a Rijal. But in reality, I'm not a Rijal. It's not like climbing a mountain or making money. That's not who Rijal is, but I didn't know. So I, I thought the business is a thing. Or the YouTube, you know, YouTube is a thing. Like I have like 30,000 people who are subscribed. This is like unusual. Like not many people can reach this level. And I don't even know why. 
and I don't put a lot of thought on my YouTube like I just make videos I don't really analyze them that much because I it's not my main priority I have my business right and I have my family I have a son subhanallah so many things and I have this small community which I was growing but very small and I thought like YouTube will be something that is very special because I can make really great content like cinematic content and I tried for many years to come up with different ideas but it's just it's all been out there and I thought like what is something that if we do this it's gonna change everything like it's gonna change the way we look at things because I have to look at my life like my life is in one piece like I'm gonna live in Slovakia we gonna we have to have a good proper community for our kids to grow up we have to create a vision and so I realized my purpose really is to just drive this vision here because I could see it when there was nothing and I could see the mosque and now subhanallah what we have is incredible and it's a <laughs> the mosque we have now is five times bigger than the mosque we had previously it was just a prayer room we've painted it we are check it out we're moving to the new masjid with the old carpets but it's historic historic moment for the Dean in Slovakia mashallah this will be really amazing Subhanallah, everybody chipped in. This I never saw before because before it was just, yeah, it was, it was hard to pull off, but it was just like doing the jumas. There wasn't much caring about the mosque, you know, vacuuming the carpet, stuff like that. But now we have a member of our community who painted the walls, who really is a construction worker. He chipped in. People have been helping with moving out things. Um, people made hijra here, so they are helping me just to keep the logistics of the mosque. You know, we made the uh, doors in the wall like there was a wall we crushed the wall and made the doors so we have toilets and things like that we're bringing new sinks for voodoo we have now money to fund this i'm collecting money from people in our congregation there's about 30 people already subhanallah everybody's willing to chip in we're creating a super super amazing Eid al fitr in the nature it's going to be the first slovak Eid al fitr in the nature with bears <laughs> And we're gonna have toilets and everything it's gonna be perfect and this is something that people haven't seen here for 30 years this is some and it's run by slovak converts there islam was always run by foreigners but now we're driving the vision forward and we're inviting people on the journey we're not giving telling you how you should view islam as you know i delve into akida and madhab discussions and i have my views but this is not about that it's about the vision it's about 30 40 years from now and subhanallah this really what happened after the cyprus after i came back from cyprus it's been amazing because i didn't want to move i didn't want to move but ahmed subhanallah one of the guys i know he said like we should move like it's too many people i was like yeah maybe we should and i called the guy and he has a free space and we looked at it like this would be perfect now we have it we're already praying tara weeks there subhanallah uh i've ordered the perfect carpet with a qibla direction subhanallah it's amazing and i thought this is never going to be possible without the imam we don't have like a, the religious leader here we have just us kind of like senior muslims who can like advise people but it's not imam but i thought like hey now this is what we've got we've got like people who are here who have moved here we can share keys open the mosque regularly not just me and then the imam I'm gonna do the Jumas, there's someone else for Tara week, there's someone else to replace me if I'm away. And subhanAllah, we can work like that. And I'm telling you right now, inshallah, watch this video if I'm not canceled or something, or die. In three to four years from now, in, th in three to four years from now, we will have our own mosque in this town. And it will be a big mosque. I'm telling you, it will be actually a building. I don't know how it's gonna look like if we, build, if we buy a land or build it or something, but it's gonna happen. Inshallah, this is a promise I'm telling you. I, 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 I have this in my head and it's going to happen. And it's just a matter of time because the beginning was just three, four guys. Now we have 30 people in the Jama'ah. On Juma we couldn't fit. There was 30 people. Look, I told you my vision is to have 100 people. This is not difficult. Times three. Now with 100 people, let's make it 500 in three years then so if we can a hundred people now we can have 500 in three years and that would be subhanallah this is the vision and if we can achieve this this would be the most unique mosque in the world 
because it's run by converts, it's run by reverts in a, the only country in the world where Islam is not recognized. It was one of the only ones. And it's going to be recognized, inshallah. But it's not even about that. We don't need, really need the recognition. We can just function as a cultural center or whatever you want to call it. But it's such a weird thing because not even in France or in big countries, you don't have reverts coming up with their own mosques. There's a very few. There's one in Granada, in Spain. There's a couple in the UK. They're very small. And we have the best mosque. I'm telling you, the best mosque in Slovakia we have now. Inshallah. We have. It's going to be the most beautiful. And I'm telling you, we're building something very unique. Everybody's excited. Every day is something new. Everything is exciting. And subhanAllah, your donations helped us to achieve this dream. But I'm also, of course, not relying just on you because I know this is not sustainable forever. We have to sustain sustain ourselves. So we're collecting our money and we're chipping in and we can cover most of the rent cost, inshallah. We still need your help, but still, if we can get to like more people, like 10 more people, we'll be able to function fine. And with your donations, we are saving up to buy these lands, to buy this mosque. And inshallah, it's going to happen. I'm telling you, I can already see it. So... I, it was the weirdest things, you know, happen in life. And uh, just three weeks ago, I didn't think this is going to be my destiny. But now I believe this is something we are doing. And now I really feel like, subhanAllah, there's some responsibility here. You know, this was all just an idea a year ago. It was fun. It was just a couple of guys. But now it's no, no longer a couple of guys. We have a lot of people coming in. And we need to create an environment for them to, to practice Islam. So it's not about dawah here. I'm, I'm establishing Islamic Center to, first of all, to practice Islam. We don't teach Islam. We have some lectures. People come in. Whoever wants to join can join. Some lectures on anything. And then we can teach the Quran in the future, things like that. But Dawah itself is a priority as well. So I want to have open mosque. I want to have like cooking sessions, whatever we can do to embrace, to show the people here that uh, they don't have to be afraid. And it's perfect because we are Slovaks. And even the colors, like the color is a green color in the mosque. And even like the, the way we, there's no not much Arabic going on, like the Arabic things. We're trying to keep it in Slovak, kind of Slavic flavor. So when you walk in, you, you, you don't feel like you're in a desert. You feel like you're still in Slovakia. And this is a Slovak mosque. What is a Slovak mosque? I don't know. There's only one Islam, but you, you need to embrace the culture. You know, the, the culture of Slovakia has to be there so people can feel like this is this belongs here inshallah this is amazing i i feel like this will be my life's mission now inshallah i don't know but this is this is something now that i'm reorienting everything towards so i'm buying a house not where i wanted to buy a house a year ago but to be closer to the mosque so i can be here i am uh, running my business not to like move out or something or be digital nomad in turkey but to actually be here I'm doing all these things and I'm also going to travel. Of course, I'm going to live in the Muslim countries for a few months in a year. But this is subhanAllah. This is something that I would never imagine. And it is much more exciting than living in like a Muslim country. I can tell you, even though you have those moments in Muslim countries where you feel amazing. But this mission and vision and purpose that we have here and the brotherhood, it's uh, much more. It's much more than I would have anywhere else because... We all share, we all have the same vision. It reminds me of Sahaba. It reminds me of early Islam. SubhanAllah. I feel Baraka coming in on us every night. I feel like we're expanding. Everybody's joining the mosque. Peep this, peep this. This is a leadership, uh, leadership thing, which, you know, I've been managing people before, but there was never this grand vision. And people didn't believe in it in the beginning. You know, you have this room, this second room. But now people see, like, oh, this is a good mosque. The leadership... Uh, lecture for me is that if you create a good vision for people like if you if you say the vision is this like we'll have this mosque how we do it I don't care we'll do it we'll raise the money just just set up the vision people themselves will own the vision and will want to be part of it because before it was like much difficult to drive it because you have to like push and go through and no one's kind of doing anything because no one is on board that much but now it's like everyone is chipping in and thinking of it as their own mosque. And this is what I always wanted. So people can be part of this. And this is how you share. Like this is how you share. Like 
if you are ever in any leadership position, you have to share with other people everything, like your wealth, your uh, whatever, your knowledge, everything. So everybody can benefit from this, you know, because this is this has nothing to do with me. But this could be something really huge, subhanAllah. And this is a really interesting lesson. Like if you create a really good vision and you start doing it, people themselves will want to be part of it. And if you don't have a vision, like a grandiose purpose for this dunya life, uh, for other people, then that everybody's just going to be very depressed and home. This was the situation in Slovakia for 30 years. Islam was never like amazingly taken care of. But now I feel there's a new energy, man. And it's, uh, it's perfect. SubhanAllah. This energy comes sometimes only. It doesn't come a lot of times. So we have to ride this wave. Allah has blessed us. Uh, Jazakallah khair. Last hour of fasting. Thank you for your donations, guys. It's been a blessing. And uh, uh, enjoy Ramadan. And I'll see you in the next video, inshallah. I'll show you the video from Eid as well, the vlog. So that's going to be amazing. And come visit us. We are not in Bratislava, we are in Banska Bystrica, because Banska Bystrica is the center of Slovakia. We have the mountains, we have lakes, we have everything here. Bratislava is just the capital, but it doesn't reflect the Slovak nature. So come here, inshallah.